it started with a game. If everyone would like just bag the noise and pay like we could do this. Sonny, name one thing that's gotten better in the last 10 years. Shall we play a game? Video games. All right, I acknowledge that. Totally awesome video games! Everybody, if I look sound exhausted, I today's Tuesday. My wife and I got back from Las Vegas yesterday night. We were there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I had a lot of fun, um, but that's I've done uh, Vegas twice now recently. I did it in April, and then uh, yesterday was is June twelfth. Um, oh, I'm exhausted. It's uh, fun and such an awful place at the same time. I bought this. I actually bought two of these. This is for my oldest son who goes to Oregon State. And I bought one that looks just like it. Only it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I had my wife and I had a few. And we were walking down that old town Vegas where it's just like a just a carnival every night. And you don't know what I want. You don't want to know what I paid for that. It probably that's a cheap tchotchke. And I bought two, and uh, you do not want to know how much I paid for them. I just had no judgment. Didn't gamble a lot. I'm not a big gambler, thank God. I actually bet on a few baseball games and won. But um, then I gave my wife all that winnings while she was at a blackjack table. And poof. <laughs> but I had fun, and she had fun. And I'm exhausted. Um, I want to talk about something uh, that's been on my mind a little bit, because I've seen this... Uh, I've seen this a few times where somebody, and it's usually, I, I think, a writer who's, who's uh, been in the industry somewhat, somewhat recently, you know, a somewhat new writer or new writer or somewhat new, puts something out on LinkedIn or, or Facebook, like a snippet of something that they wrote recently. And they you know, want to show it off because they're proud of it. it. Might be a little excerpt from a book they're writing in their spare time. Or I just saw recently somebody had posted, you know, a little a, 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 a work sample, which is pretty legitimate, right? We're, we're, often we apply for jobs. Why? So that's why I, I tell you all. You know, I made this video about you know designing a portfolio. In fact, this whole course is about you know teaching you a process and hooking you up with. Um, uh, free tools so that you can create a portfolio. You gotta have you have to have work to show potential uh, employers, right? But um, here's the problem, and, and I think it's a problem. This is just my opinion. Uh, the, the The problem goes back to don't lead with new material. What does that mean? That's an expression stand up comics use. I don't have any experience with stand up comedy, but I find it very interesting. Uh, and that is an expression that they have. It's like one of the golden rules, I think, is don't lead with new material. In other words, when you start your set, you, you start with some, some you know, jokes to kind of ingratiate yourself with the crowd. Maybe, you know, you, you joke about the local sports team, um, um, that kind of thing. And then, and then you, you go into some tried and tested bits, jokes that you know work, jokes that you have tested already, refined, tested again, mm -hmm. and are getting laughs, and you're confident that, that this is good material. And you start that because you don't want your, your, your set to start out flat, because it can kind of be an uphill climb from there. You start with uh, the tried and true jokes, get people laughing, and then... You know, if you're, if you're just at a regular small club, maybe you're somewhere in the middle of the act. You test newer stuff. Try and see if it works or not. So you can start that process with different with, 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 with new material. Whether, you, whether maybe you just toss it, or maybe it's getting a response, and so you can just, just tweak it some more and test it again at the next show. Don't lead with new material. Now, that would seem to be maybe an easy rule to follow, but I think as, as you know, if you talk to stand-up comedians, 
even the, you know the ones who who have been doing it a long time and and really know their stuff, the veterans, it can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes because sometimes you can be so tempted. You think of something new, and new is always exciting. You're excited about it because it's new, and, and you're proud of it. And so you say, "Oh, okay. I know. Usually, I don't lead with no, but but just I this I this is going to be different. I feel it. I th- this is going to be different." And so sometimes. Even the experienced sort of, you know, veteran stand-up comedians lead with new material. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, it's, it, it's harder to get the set going. And I think us writers can um, learn from that, right? Because I have seen writers who will post something that they're, I know they're proud of. And they'll post it publicly. And it's, it's, you know, maybe it's just, uh, usually sometimes a snippet from, from something that they wrote. And I have a feeling that's something that they wrote real recently and they're excited about and kind of read it and it's, it's okay. Um, but it's probably not something that's been, you know, refined and worked on and, 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 you know, I know one writer who, who writes novels, well, his name's Richard Dansky. And when he, so when he posts and says, hey, I've written a novel, you can assume that, you know, it's been written, rewritten, rewritten again, rewritten lots of times, polished, polished some more, and there's probably an editor somewhere giving him feedback, and uh, then he arrives at the final product, and he puts it out there, and it's, it's, it's a complete work, and it's, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a little more tried, tested, and true. And then something that, you know, a young writer may have just wrote and it's new and you're just super proud of it. You want to show everybody. I recommend you don't. Um, it's it, And I think context matters here, too. I think here's, here's my other point. When an employer contacts you for samples, right, and you've been working on your portfolio, like we've talked about, um, even the stuff in your portfolio is probably polished. Like if you maybe wrote short stories in school and you had feedback from other students and professors, um, or maybe you've just been working on some interactive fiction using Twine and you hopefully had people test it and play it and see where maybe they got confused and, and just had time to polish it and test it. But, and so I think not only is the stuff in your portfolio hopefully a lot more polished than something you just wrote and are excited about, but also there's some context there. If I'm an employer asking you for samples and you send me samples, I'm in that mindset of, okay, let's evaluate. I asked you for samples, you sent them, and I'm going to evaluate them. But I think when you just throw something out on social media, it's a little different, right? Nobody, nobody asked you for it. I know. Look, I, I, I'm... I am a writer too. I I guarantee, I have probably a bigger ego than anybody you'll meet. Uh, so I'm not you know I'm I'm learned stuff the hard way, right? Um, I I don't think I'm that egotistical, but I, what I'm saying is I I have um, we all have our egos, okay? Nothing to be ashamed of here, but um, you know you're just putting stuff out there, and I think people people's expectations are different. People are like oh okay, Mister or Mrs. Uh, or whomever, um, you know, fancy writer person. Okay, you're gonna impress me with your stuff. Let's let's see what you got. And I think maybe maybe people can be a little more harsh, even if they don't don't. Hopefully they're not mean to you online, but but people can be a little more harsh. I think in their evaluation, you know, for you to put something out there in the public, you must be really proud of it. You must think it's really good, and it's fine to be proud of it. It's great to be proud of it but i recommend my recommendation anyway is don't lead with new material i've seen a lot of people do this we're always going to be excited by something new i'm working on something new it's actually on the that thing there um i'm not going to show any excerpts from it i'm going to try and finish it and then get get feedback and hope it doesn't suck and and then probably self-publish it and and then see where it goes. But I'm not, I'm not going to show any excerpts from it, you know. People, I think, are in a different mindset. You know, maybe, maybe they think we're showing off, which doesn't necessarily mean that we that we are doing that intentionally. But I don't think they're... They, I, don't, I just don't think it's a good way to showcase your work. I think you put it on your website. 
uh, or, or put it out there, you know, finish things and put it out there. Put out your finished twang game. Put out your finished novel. Put out your self-published collection of short stories on Amazon. Even if nobody reads it, put it out there. Um, nobody reads my comic book, but I'm pretty proud that it's out there. And, um, and then when you're asked, you know, to show your portfolio, show them your, your polished works that you're proud of. But don't lead with new material on, on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. I, I just think it you're 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 risking a lot, and and for, I don't know if there's a lot of gain there. You know, I I, I don't know that people are going to read your you know something you just wrote on LinkedIn and be like, boom, we have to hire this person. I don't see that. I haven't seen that happen much in twenty years that I know of, and um, I don't think that's a likely outcome. I think that there's a greater risk. You're putting, you're, you're putting something out there that you might be enamored with at the moment. It's not quite ready for prime time, but you get judged for it. And, and, and people, you know, um, maybe it, may, it, 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 you know, it possibly makes it harder for people to take you, you know, seriously as, as the, as the good writer that you are and the great writer that you one day will be. All right, not much else to say that say there. Uh, if you're ever in Las Vegas and you do that old strip, that, that old Vegas, that, that strip of the old Vegas where they have just music and, and they're selling the tchotchkes like this and uh, there's half-naked uh, people. There's, there's like snake handlers you can pay to take your picture with and there's like these half-naked people and there we saw three different sets of, of, of got dudes with their shirts off. And what they are were like, I think, professional stripper, male strippers. And what they do is they when, when, when someone walks to a woman <laughs> walks too close, they kind of get up on you and they put the say, Hey, come on, let's take a picture. Hey. And they do something fun, like like they'll put angel wings on your back uh, and and hoist you up and take a picture, but then you gotta pay them for the picture and they want kinda want a lot of money for the picture. And I know because this has happened to my wife while we were there. So it's fun. But if you don't want to give them, end up giving them like, you know, a lot of money, uh, make, give them a wide berth so that they don't kind of glom on to you. And then you feel really self-conscious and you feel, you know, like, you, you, you're, I mean, you're laughing and having, she's laughing and having fun. But, um, you know, it, just give them a wide berth and, uh, and, you'll, and, and you'll be okay. You know, save, save your money. Don't buy, don't buy this shit. I might, hopefully my kid will think this is fun, but it wasn't, wasn't worth the money. Okay, I'll see you soon.